In today's video, we'll take a look at how the left shift and right shift operators work. So to start off, I have defined here a simple variable. It's an unsigned 32-bit integer. That's value is one. And let's take a look at how uh, this guy works. So if I were to say here a and then say left shift, so that's uh, two less than signs one after the other. And then let's say one here. What does that mean? Well, to find out, let's print that on the screen. So you can say print F and I can say here percent D, let's say left shifted by one. And here, I'm gonna do this and then there we go. If I try to run this, well, you'll notice that if we left shift A by one, the result of this is actually two. So we just kind of added one to it. We just doubled this one. What if we left shifted by two then? So if I try to do the same thing, but just left shifted by two, now it's four. So you kind of notice a pattern here. Basically, if I try to left shift by three, well, guess what? It's going to be eight, right? So every time it's going to double the result. And in fact, it doesn't have to be one here. If I choose, for example, five and try to run this now, you'll notice left shifted by one is 10, then 20, then 40. So it seems like the left shift operator, all it does is multiply by two to the power of whatever number we have here. So five times two to the power of one is, well, 10, five times two to the power of three is, well, 40, because it's five times eight, right? So it, it sort of seems like that's the case. And to sort of visualize this left shift operator, what it does, we can uh, get a for loop to sort of left shift by one, by two, by three, and so on, up until let's say 31. All right, so this is the code that I came up with and it's not, don't worry, it's not too complicated. Uh, what I have here is basically uh, this I being printed right here, right? So this is the I, I just wanna know at which iteration I am. Um, then I'm printing this guy, which is actually A, shifted by i times, I'm shifting it by zero first, by one, by two, by three, and so on, and printing it in hexadecimal, so I know what's going on behind the scenes. And then I'm also doing the same thing, but printing it as just a number. I'm using percent %u here because it's an unsigned int, right? It's not percent %d. Uh, one thing I forgot is to add a zero two here, just so that we have two characters here, so everything is aligned. Now, if I try to run this, You'll notice something very interesting. So here, the first one is left shifted by zero. So basically we multiplied by two to the power of zero, right? Which is one, so we didn't do anything. We got five, that's the initial value. Then we got 10, then we got 20, 40, 80, and so on and so forth, right? It, so, it looks like we're doubling every single time here. So this gives us an overview at what the left shift operator does. Basically from a five, we get to an A in hexadecimal. Well, let's take a look at how that looks in uh, binary. So a five in binary is what? Is zero one, zero one, right? It's one times four plus one times one. Makes sense. And a 10 is, one zero one zero, that's an eight plus a two. So as you can see, it sort of moved. It moved this one to here and this one to here and it added a zero at the end here. And if you'll notice the next one up 20, we get a one four in hexadecimal. So you can say here 20 and 20 in hexadecimal is actually one times 16, zero times eight and one times four and then zero zero. So if I try to line them up properly, you'll notice again, it moved one, it moved this one here and then this one here. So that's sort of what the left shift operator does. It moves all the bits. It takes every single bit inside the value here and it moves it by whatever, how many times you uh, say it should, move, it should move here. So for example, if I say left shift by one, it's gonna transform these ones and move them all to the left and add a zero here at the beginning. 
So I hope this makes sense. Now, there's some peculiarity here if you take a look at the last ones. If you, uh, n you might have noticed that the 29th one is correct. We're getting an A here. So that's 1010 zero, zero right at the end. So that's where we have moved everything. But then the next one is only four. So instead of uh, going from this one to this one, we went to four, which is just zero, one, zero, zero. And that's because we didn't have any more space. So we sort of uh, took this structure, this zero, one, zero, one, and moved it so far out that this one here, or yeah, this one here actually got sort of uh, disappeared, right, of the boundary. So we just are left with this one, which represents this four in hexadecimal. So that's why if you multiply this 29th value by two, you're not going to get the next one, right? It's sort of uh, an issue with how much space. You'll notice that if I run this, well, everything is fine and dandy up until here where we are getting negatives, right? So it's no longer doubling that value is kind of uh, stepping into negative. So if you're dealing with such large numbers, you have to be careful to not go over uh, and override the the sign bit, which is the first one uh, in here, right? So this one, as you can see, we had 0, 1, 0, 1, which was 5. And then we got 1, 0, 1, 0, which was A. And that first one that we got uh, was treated as a sign bit, which, is, which makes the number negative. Right. Another thing is if you have pretty large numbers. So for example, I, if I'm going to have here a hundred million, you'll notice that uh, the first few times it works and then it overflows. And then uh, that also becomes a problem, right? It, it, we only get garbage up until here. If you really want to use it for doubling numbers, if you're just trying to uh, use it for bitwise operations, that works very nicely, as you can see right from this pattern onwards. Um, the same thing applies with right shifting. We sort of get the same uh, result, except instead of moving to the left, we move to the right. So if we try this here, if I say, I say still an unsigned int, I'm going to have here, I don't know, one, um, or maybe even a pretty big number. Why not? And if I right shift, so right shifted by that, and I'm going to have here percent %u, and I'm going to change this to a right shift. So a right shift is just two greater signs, two greater than signs after another. And then the same exact structure. We just have a value and another value here. If I try to run this, you'll notice the number sort of uh, is divided by two every single time. So this is the original one, 100 million, and then once we shift it right by one, we get, well, 50 million and 25 million and so on up until we get zero. So we are dividing it by two, but of course we're not keeping, uh, we're not getting floating point number, we're going to get integers. So 11 divided by two will be just five. It makes sense. In most cases, this is going to be faster than actually dividing by two on uh, your own especially if you need to divide by uh, two to the power of whatnot. Now with signed integers, right shifting becomes very interesting. If you try to have here a signed integer and I have, uh, let's leave it as is for now. If we do the same thing and print out here percent %d, nothing changed. So that's the same thing we get zeros added at the beginning as we did before. We just sort of move it to the right and get zeros added, added at the beginning. But if we were to change this to a negative number, like so, and try to run it, you'll notice something very interesting. Um, so we started with negative 100 million and divided by two or right shifted once or by one, we got negative 50 million. But here at the beginning, we got a, a one, right? Since F is four ones in binary, we actually got a one at the beginning instead of a zero. So if I compare this 
with what we got with a positive number, right? You'll see that this zero still remains a zero and so on and so forth. It sort of populates everything with zeros. But in this case, it sort of populates everything with Fs. So the right shift takes a look at um, the sign bit. So it asks basically, is this a negative or a positive number? If it's a positive number, add a zero at the beginning and shift everything to the right by however much you want. And then if it's a negative number, you're gonna, it's gonna add a one at the beginning. This is in most, uh, this is how it works in most compilers. Uh, and it's not really guaranteed that it's going to do this, but if you test it and it works for you, then that's nice. It's in most cases. Now, one last thing, uh, the left shift and right shift operators also have an assignment counterpart. So instead of let's, let's delete all that. Instead of uh, saying A equals A and left shift by, I don't know, two, you can just say A left shift equals by two. And if I try to print this, you'll notice. You'll notice I'm gonna get, well, this is, well, this is a hundred million times four, right? So it makes sense. Um, you can use that or you can use right shift the same exact way. This sort of helps you a little bit, make the code uh, more readable. So I hope you understood what left shift and right shift is all about. Mostly if you're working with integers, it's just going to either divide by two to some power or uh, multiply by times two to some power, right? If you're working with basically just bytes, it's just going to move all the bits to the left or to the right. They are the exact, it's the exact same operation, except when working with signed integers. When working with si signed integers, it's going to, uh, the right shift operator, it's going to take a look at whether the integer is positive or negative and fill in the, the left space with a zero or a one. So I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions about the bit shift operators, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Thank you guys so much for watching and take care.